A while back I made a video demonstrating how to connect an F, a Behringer FCB 1010 foot pedal to main stage 3 and I said I would create a, another video showing how to create a looper or tape delay effect again using that FCB 1010 and main stage 3. If you haven't seen the first video and you need some help there I'll put a link in the notes on how to get to that first video. Um, watch that first and then if you uh, when you get through that if you want to build the loop effect here's how you're gonna do it. Um, so I've got main stage 3 up I'm gonna start with just this guitar concert let that load and you can start with almost anything you want because I'm gonna end up deleting almost all of the items out of this um, so we'll acknowledge that no sound will be produced we will close out of performance mode and we'll go to layout so here we go deleting most of the stuff here delete 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 and we're going to delete everything except for volume and we're going to actually take that volume control out come down here to the bottom shelf controls foot pedal drag that in oops and I'm going to go back over to panel controls and scroll down, grab this waveform, put it up at the top, extend it out, and we'll go back to shelf controls again and add five foot switches, one to match each of the foot switches on your Behringer FCB 1010. And I'm doing this fast. I'm not. Uh, not going to make it perfect, just going to make it do the trick for you so you'll know how to do this yourself. Okay, <clears throat> that's the basic layout I'm going to use. Now I'm going to do two things. I'm going to assign each of these pedals to a physical pedal on the Behringer. So uh, the way I'm going to do this, select the pedal on the screen, click the button that says assign, and then step on the appropriate pedal. So I'm going to step on pedal number one on the Behringer FCB 1010. And when I do that, you see the information about that pedal show up in this uh, small window at the top. I'm also going to click Add Hardware Label and I'm going to call this one Record. And it's a little bit too narrow to show that whole word, so I'll widen this pedal out a little bit, which I find surprisingly difficult. Select the second pedal, Assign, and we're going to call, uh, we're going to step on pedal number two now and hardware label this one we're going to call play third one we're going to click the third pedal add hardware label this one we'll be calling undo again it wants to be just a little bit wider fourth pedal step on the fourth pedal on the behringer and this label will be stop and the final pedal step on the fifth pedal on the Behringer and add hardware label this one will be called clear again that pedal is going to want to be widened out a little bit <clears throat> on the volume pedal we're going to assign that as well so click the volume pedal We've still got a sign selected up here, so as you just move that pedal up and down, it will assign that as well. And now we're done with the layout, that's all. Next, click on the edit, and we'll go into the edit window. And now we're going to do a couple things. First, we're going to start by removing all of these patches. So select and press delete, press delete, delete, delete. We're going to add a new patch in, and we're going to call this one loop. That's done. And then we're going to go over to the other side, pr press plus, and add new channel strip. So channel strip number one is going to be audio, mono, whatever input you're using. So in my case, I'm going to use input number two. You can choose whichever one's appropriate for you. Here's the critical bit. The output should not be to a standard output channel, but to a bus. So select a bus that's unused. I'm using 11 and create. You'll see the channel strips show up here on the right hand side. I've got audio one, auxiliary one, 
and output one and two. I'm going to rename these. So the first one is going to be, uh, we'll name this for whatever instrument. So we could call it guitar or bass or whatever. Let's call it guitar one and auxiliary we're going to rename to looper. Now note that our audio one comes through input two or whatever input you chose and goes output bus 11 and then auxiliary is input bus 11. So that's the critical bit that your audio input goes, or your audio input channel strip, the output of it then is going to go to the same bus that the auxiliary bus is coming as input. Now I'm going to uh, select a patch here. I'm going to go down to delay, loop back, stereo and we'll get the looper um, the looper patch I'm gonna I'm gonna suggest that you spend some time learning your way around this patch but all I'm gonna do with it right now go to sync off snap to off play from relative position again there's a lot to learn on this patch and you should learn it. It can do some really cool things. You can have multiple looper uh, patches going and use them for different things. So learn your way around this guy. Um, understand the groups. If you have multiple loopers going on at once, you can um, you can put them in groups. Um, understand how to use these settings. But for now, that's all we're going to do is just make those changes. Close that down. And now we're going to assign each of the elements on the screen to, uh, we're going to map them to an actual function. So at the concert level, select first our, uh, our audio screen. When you select it, select looper and then loop back. And what that's doing is it's pointing to this looper, uh, I'm sorry, it's pointing to this looper um, channel strip and this loop back patch. So we've now assigned this and you can see that when I did that we suddenly had uh, some numbers appear here. These are bar measures, um, bar numbers. So we'll move on to the next item, record. Now again we're going to go down and find looper which again points to this channel and inside of that loop back which again points to this loop back patch. Then we're going to go, we're going to go on non-automatable, transport, and because this is the record button, we'll select record. And we're going to do this with each of the pedals. Looper, loop back, non-automatable, transport, and play. Undo, looper, loop back, non-automatable, transport, undo, stop, looper, loop back, non-automatable, transport, stop and finally clear goes to looper loop back non-automatable transport and clear your volume pedal go to output one two or whatever output you chose and volume and then this output bar is your meter. It's going to show what the output level is, and that should already be selected because that was part of the original concert. And that's it. You're done. Now you can use this by stepping on the appropriate buttons on your Behringer. You can initiate record, play, undo, stop, and clear. Um, I might create another short video to show you a, a quick demonstration of the use of this, but I think it should be pretty straightforward now. Press perform as soon as you press record. There it's recording. As soon as you press that record button again, it will continue playing and then uh, record the next layer of stuff that you want. If you want to, if you want the audio to continue playing, but you don't want to record anymore, then you uh, turn off the record and you're done with that. You can undo your previous recording stop the recording of course and then clear everything so that you can start over hope that was helpful to you if you have any questions please leave them in the comments below and i'll be happy to get back to you hope this was helpful and have a great day cheers